My name is John and I'm at Paint School on Instagram. I've done over $15 million in paint jobs and I'm based out of Huntington Beach, California. Aaron is at Alpha Painting on Instagram. He's managed huge commercial projects with impossible timelines and has a few years into building his own operation out of Branson, Missouri. And you should probably check out our full process videos on YouTube because they're pretty badass. Our point in doing this podcast is to put our 40 plus years of combined experience to the test. We've seen a decline in the industry. And while I think it's a bit arrogant to think we can change it, we're giving it a shot. Listen up and let us know what you think. This is Paint Sniffer Podcast. All right, we're back on, I think this is episode 19 now. Um, and I want to give a quick update for like viewership and stuff. I think it's interesting. Uh, maybe some people find it interesting too. Uh, we've had about 1500 downloads so far. Um, we're, we have, uh, 1% of the viewership is 60 plus. So we've got a couple old guys or old girls listening. Um, <laughs> 5% female, 95% male, which is probably uh, understandable. We've got 1% of uh, downloads coming from India, which I think is interesting. 4% from Ireland. So I don't know if maybe you interact with some Ireland folks on Instagram or something. Um, the, the vast majority is 35 to 44 male in America, you know, Canada's pulling up a, a decent viewership in there, but those are uh, our, our main numbers at this point. Yeah. Seems like we're averaging, like, because I, we started the YouTube shit on my channel, on mm-hmm. my Alpha Painting channel. You know, I, I was behind because we had some technical issues um, on, like, four episodes. So if I drop back to... The previous ones, I mean, dude, we're really only averaging on YouTube, like, probably 65 views or so per episode. But you froze there for a minute. How many per episode? About 65 per episode on YouTube. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it was, uh, we were having, like, three or 400 when it was on your channel, right? On your page? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I figure it's some, some mix of... You know, I mean, you have a decent following that come in and check your videos, which if you don't check uh, Alpha Paintings videos, you should. They're pretty fucking like insanely edited videos. Um, And we've talked about you making those for other people at some point. We'll see if that ever, if you ever take that on. But I've got a guy in my town, a, a competitor that's asking for me to make him one. Yeah. And I'm. What you know, I I wouldn't mind doing it. I think competition stimulates growth, Mm -hmm. but you wouldn't want like everybody having them, you know, like a a false sense of of quality and experience. You know what I mean? Yeah, that is, yeah, because you can make a pretty shitty company or a very average company look really good. A hundred percent, well produced video, yeah, 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 with (laughs) like good shots and all that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, another interesting thing, um, Sherwin Williams stock, you know, they're a publicly traded company. Um, so in December of 2021, about six months, seven months ago, um, they were trading at $352 a share, which was their all time high. And now it's at $243 a share, which is a 30% cut. So a 30% cut, uh, in six months, seven months, I guess now at this point, um, I've heard that they're going to be raising their prices again in September. Um, we still have shortages on quite a bit of products. Um, I know like through Facebook groups and stuff like that, there's still a lot of shortages, different parts of the country. Originally, I was told that uh, over winter time, because everywhere else in the country besides here gets shitty weather that paint purchases would slow down everywhere else. They'd be able to um, build up a supply or a stock, and then we'd be fine going into like spring 2022, um, which is not the case, right? Do you guys, you do a lot of like pre-purchasing for your bigger projects, right? Is that because of supply? I had been. I hadn't really been affected by the shortages. Um, 
but I could see that I was going to be at some point. So yeah, I had started pre-stocking my jobs months in advance on like the people that I trusted, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, shit, I stocked fucking like six or $7,000, $8,000 on one job worth of product. Um, and yeah, so I haven't been able to get any, um, a 100 alkyd primer. So I've got, I've got quite a bit of that in overstock, which I think is going to bounce me between like two more projects. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there's certain, there's cert- certain products, you know, I, they haven't had any rain refresh for like a fucking year. Yeah. Um, the, the alkyd primer that I got was, um, shit, I got like 60 gallons of it or so. Um, and we had to we had to order it in gallons. I don't know if they had it in a in a distribution center just somewhere. You mm-hmm. know, it seems like a lot of people are getting away from uh conventional oils and stuff, but yeah. um yeah. Uh I've seen some shortages in some of the products in the pro industrial line, you know, like bond plex and shit like that. Yeah. Um uh there's a fucking Sherwin hasn't had any clear caulking, I guess, for a long time. Yeah, like I think they fucking... pulled off some of the main products were gone for a while, like Powerhouse. You know, a lot of people I, were stocking up on yeah. that. I've never been... Oh, well, may, yeah, actually, I don't know if Powerhouse was out. Like, the white... We've been using uh, QD for a while. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm closer to Dunn Edwards, you know, as far as the intel there. Um... And yet the products that are um, the products that are like being really consistent in stock are the main selling products, right? Yeah. So like they're Every Shield, they're Suprema. These are like they're um, higher end interior and exterior paints. And then some of their commercial stuff like went away for a long time. I think it's mostly back now. But any of the items that are like um, slower sellers. They're just not even making them, you know, they're just, just like buy what we have. We're not making that product for a while. And then every now and then, so right now a, a deep base for Arista shield, they have zero, none of the stores have it. Um, so I it's wonder, like random stuff. I wonder why Sherwin stocks are down. I know of some older sales reps that have went into retirement and like their 401k is paid out into the millions, you know, like mm-hmm. two, three, five million dollars type shit yeah. and i wonder if they ha- if their stocks are down because they have a bunch of like old school guys that are probably sick of dealing with this shit and they're all retiring drawing drawing their 401ks and shit or why yeah. why would sherwin stock be down um so yeah i mean there's a couple reasons so one major reason is everybody's stock is down right now <clears throat> and i think I think that there it's like um a lot of a lot of companies got pumped up last year, you know, last year and the year before. So I think even the levels that they're at now, it's not really like a fair assessment. Because basically there nobody could put their cash anywhere. You know, it's like businesses were were like defunct. Um and so everybody had to put their money somewhere. You know, it was like they weren't investing in companies and new companies. They were for a while. And then this big boom, the stock market shot up because everybody was parking their cash in the stock market. So, you know, when when everyone's getting all this free money, PPE money and all that shit or PPP, um, they were just dumping their money in these companies. Like all these hotels that are not even like open, their stock was rising. You know, it was like insane. Like they were doing like the worst amount of business they've ever done in history. Yet their value is going up. So I think Sherwin Williams just, you know, um, hop hitched a ride on that, that bandwagon and shot up. You know, I think their all time high was a really inflated number. But so if their value goes up, I don't know what the market cap is, but let's say it's like $30 billion. Let's say at $352 a share, their market cap is $30 billion. Now, 
you know, in 2021, they did do a ton of business, you know, like our industry was kind of booming, right? It's like everyone's buying houses, everyone's refinancing houses. So they're selling a shit ton of product. So value goes up. They have to, um, you know, give their predictions on what they're going to do the next quarter or the next year. So everybody in order to keep their value high was predicting it's going to be the same, you know? So like, you know, we did, I don't know, $12 million, $12 billion of business last quarter or like, let's say third quarter, 2021. Uh, we're anticipating 2022 to stay on track. We're going to do another 12 billion per quarter. Summertime's busier. So we'll do 16 billion for second and third quarter and back down to 12 billion for fourth quarter. So, but those numbers were inflated because, you know, like super low interest rates, really high um, amount of people buying homes, really high amount of people refinancing. So that flooded the market just with cash, you know, in the, the construction industry, basically. Um, so if they predict that they're still going to continue these really high record sales into 2022 and they miss the mark, they say we're going to do 12 billion in the first quarter of 2022 and they come in at like 8 billion. Um, then everyone panics and like, oh shit, what, what happened, right? Like how come they sold so little? What's the next quarter going to be like? And so right now for third quarter and fourth quarter, a lot of the companies are coming out ahead of time and saying, we're not going to hit our numbers. They are going to be lower. Um, you know, trying to get everybody not to panic when they have a shitty third quarter and a shitty fourth quarter. And so that hopefully they can stabilize the stock. So right now at 243 per share, I think that's more realistic. And the 352 was really pumped up, you know, so I don't think they're going to crash much more. Um, but a 30% haircut on fucking whatever their market cap is, you know, that's a lot of money. So shareholders went from like, yeah, we're all rich to, oh shit, what's going to happen next? You know, yeah. it's a huge, huge cut. And is that happening with other paint manufacturers? Yeah, I don't know. Um, Dunn Edwards is owned by a Japanese company. I wonder. I'm sure all of them are feeling it, though. And that's retarded, in my opinion, because, you know, paint is more than it ever has been. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what are they going to do when they start losing value? They're going to increase the prices on us. And it's already overpriced, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So PPG was at uh, 170, it looks like, um, in December. And they're at 114 now. So that, that's a pretty good uh, cut. Is, is Sherwin bigger than PPG? Uh, I don't know how their stocks are cut up. I, I wouldn't think that it would be because PPG is so deep into the automotive market with automotive paints and glass and shit. Yeah. So PPG automotive has a, a 27 billion market cap. Um, let's see what Sherwin is. Sherwin is 63 billion market cap. Damn. Sherwin's twice the size. I, I huh. would have not projected that. Sherwin has bought out so many companies, though, like in the last yeah. five years. So many companies. That is interesting, though. PPG does have a lot of other businesses or a lot of <sighs> other stuff they do. But, yeah, it looks like a pretty significant difference. Uh, but they've both taken, you know, 30% plus or minus hit uh, just in six months. They um, need to start buying out some better industrial wood coatings companies because – yeah. I don't think for a system I want to fuck with having to use, um, you know, like their their vinyl sealer yeah. out of the Sherwood line, then switching to Sayer Lac, and then well, it's such. They, a they bought Exalta, right? The Valspar um, lacquer. Yeah. So they bought them, but they haven't branded it. They they changed it from Valspar to Exalta, and I think that's because so many other companies still use it. Like Dunn Edwards' main lacquer product is Exalta. It was Valspar. But really? It's called Exalta now. Yeah. And I think that's so that Dunn Edwards doesn't have to have a Sherwin Williams branded product that they sell. Yeah. 
Sherwin needs to buy like CIC or fucking Envirolac or something yeah, like that. One of these. And, yeah, yeah. And like ramp it up to where the products are, are you know, running Everywhere. more to the liking of, of, you know, standard architectural coding versus yeah. these uh these guys that like spraying out of fucking gravity fed hoppers and shit. Yeah, I wonder if um if that's like uh, those companies aren't big enough yet, you know, for sure when to want to buy them. Yeah. Because it's still relatively new products for like mainstream. Yeah. Um, a lot of companies still don't touch like any of the 2K water based stuff. It's relatively new. I think we're, you know, more familiar with it because of circles we run in. But I think overall, like most of my customers have never heard of it. You yeah. Know? They have heard of lacquer. They have heard of epoxies and paints and stuff. Yeah. From what I've used, the products seem good. Um, And if they're all in the same type of family, I think there's a lot of potential there. But there's a shit ton of work and and R&D that needs to be dumped into those products. They need to be improved to the point to where they're more user-friendly and they spray you know, with a decent amount of viscosity and stuff. Mm-hmm. and They are so different, like company to company or brand to brand with the 2Ks. It's, um, it's interesting how, well, so there's a lot of similarities as far as how they react with the hardeners or the catalyst, dry times and stuff like that, feeling at the end when the product is done. Um, but the viscosity of the products is like completely different from one to the next. It's really yeah. weird. Okay. Um, while we're on the topic of financials and Hey, you one know, one second though. Did yeah. those uh did that fine paints of Europe e- eco satin samples, did those ever dry? <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> so I think technically they're dry, but they're yeah. not hard. You know, yeah. it's a soft coating. Um yeah, I mean they've got to be technically dry at this point, but it's not a hard coating at all. You know, like I would, I would find. Uh, there's no way I would put this on cabinetry. Yeah. Um, and the, I think even on walls, like it's not special. You know, if you're no. going to use it on walls, I could see using it on walls. The interesting thing is, there's a lot of companies that um, claim to be using this on trim work. You know, and like higher end companies on Instagram yeah. and stuff like that. Um. And I wonder if it's just, they're just okay with it being a soft coating, you know, like that's just all right with them. Um, well, I had one guy that sent me pictures of how it was, you know, the, the uni primer was all powdered up. He yeah. had his, his sanding block sitting there and it, you yeah. know, unless he's going outside and just mixing, right. mixing dirt into it to lie to me. But, yeah. well, but so I, I, you know, I made video like that to show powdering too, right? Yeah. It's like I, you could, to, because we know how to make it work. If it's not going to work, we could still do that. Like I could still get it to powder up, or I could get it to look like it powders up. Yeah. But it's like nothing compared to, lacquer. Um, yeah, lack. Not even close to a lack. Yeah. White. But white even like a, a hard, a hard drying water base. You know, it's yeah. nothing close to that. You can get it to look like powder, you know, if you're doing light pressure, fast strokes, um, so it's not gumming up on you. But I wouldn't put like a, a machine sander to it. You know, yeah. you can go through like 50 sheets of sandpaper just to do anything with it. It's like uh, even like the 2Ks, like the, the, the 1107 sands really well, but yeah. it, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't technically like powder like lacquer so to me it's like the the fucking eco the uni primers like the difference of snowboarding on fresh powder compared to fucking trying to snowboard on ice you know yeah 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 i don't uh i've messed i have the doors sitting here in my shop (laughs) they're just sitting out on the shelf yeah um yeah but look like you know, this is something we discussed in that podcast where I could show you pictures of these and say, oh, these were done six months ago or whatever it was, four months ago, and they look fantastic. You know, like the sheen looks really nice. You know, it's a nice satin finish. Um, it just feels like, and performs like Valspar. Yeah. It, you could put your fingernail in and leave an imprint. You know, it's not a hard coating at all. Um, it feels rubbery. 
that's you know look at it just don't touch it you know yeah and that's not a kind of product i want to put on cabinets or trim trim fuck no not trim yeah but you could easily like if you're a company that does fine paints of europe you could easily say oh no, i'm fancy it works great for me oh yeah it works great for me i use it all the time you know Fucking it's like all right fancy well as fuck yeah i could use it all the time too i suppose um i just wouldn't you know um but we've got to do um like the oil-based line you know do samples with that go through that process i imagine that's got to be a better a better experience yeah um but now this shit yeah that'd be a problem if the oil didn't dry (laughs) yeah i i knew a guy that uh back in the day put a bunch of penetrol into a conventional alkyd enamel Mm -hmm. and shot a front door like super heavy yeah and uh the the guy that I knew that, you know, was actually contractually obligated to do the house, you know, um, had went back during touch up and he told me that he put his hand on the door mm-hmm. and you could take and move yeah, like yeah. the outside, the outside <laughs> of the, the paint right. had filmed a coating and was dry. But there right. was so much paint and so much uh, penetrol on there yeah. that you could take and you could move the yeah. fucking paint because it, it was still wet inside yep i've had that happen you know that like through the trial and error period of learning how to paint the right way yeah um i've had that happen on like clear you know varnishes or polyurethanes back in the day putting it on way too heavy and yeah it it can actually be dry to touch on the outside but you could literally like slide you know i mean yeah. millimeters or whatever but fucking actually move the outer layer coating because not even attached <laughs> yeah crazy um all right so business so far for this year um how is your company doing what do your numbers look like compared to last year are you up are you down are you even phone well, calls like let's do a, a little catch i up. am uh I'm fucking terrible. And that's one of the reasons why I said yes to this podcast with you is because I need to learn some business shit and Mm -hmm. you're like the perfect guy to learn from. Mm -hmm. Um, But I need to, yeah, I need to start coming up with systems, track my numbers and blah, blah, blah. But uh, yeah, I think this time last year, um, you know, I was, I was doing less. I, uh, I don't remember the exact number for my, uh, my expenses last year, but I know that I'm, you know, probably 20 grand or so more in paint sales than, uh, you know, like material purchases than I was the year before. Um, I don't know. I think, yeah, come towards the end of the year, I will probably be more this year than I was last year, but you know, I'm probably looking 20, $30,000 more, not like, yeah. Hu- huge numbers. Um, That's on your paint purchasing? No, I'll probably like overall, you know, like gross income yeah. or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. So, but look, I, if that's, so 20 or 30 grand, this is why, you know, when you do get to dig in the numbers, and I think we should, you and I will both do a practice at the end of the year of like, you know, putting together numbers from last year and then comparing them to this year. But if you did 300 grand last year in business, that's 10%. You know, I mean, that's yeah. pretty good. Well, it's, year dude, year. it's just me and one guy. So I think yeah. last year, um, well, no, dude, I haven't even filed my fucking taxes for last year. So I'm talking about the year before. Yeah. Um, I, the year before, I think I was at like 220 grand or so that, and that was just pretty much me and Jeremiah. Yeah. Um, and somewhere around 50 or 60,000 in paint sales. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and then last year, you know, more this year, more. So, I mean, I'm slowly growing over each year, but, yeah. um, you know, there's only a certain point that I can go with one employee, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. I've got an apprentice right now, but I don't, I don't really base my shit around, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, relying on anybody right now in order to grow like what we the way that I run shit is we we take on jobs and just stack stack the schedule to where we could 
work fucking 80 hours a week if we wanted to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. So for us, um, I do track my numbers closer. Um, last year, uh, we ended up like right around 1.9 million, like 1.85. Um, and it was a busy year, but it was a really profitable year. So we were really efficient. We didn't push much for growth. You know, we, we've hovered in like the 18 to 25 people range for the last three years, probably. Um, and that was cut back from like 35 to 40 a couple of years prior to that. So the last couple of years have been really comfortable for me, you know, not having to work real hard, not pushing for growth. You know, we're not doing like any extra marketing dollars or anything like that. We don't do any Facebook advertising. We're not doing Google AdWords. We're doing all mostly the free stuff like Yelp and Google My Business and that kind of shit. Um, and so this year we are, we this year has been weird. Um, we're still on track to do more than we did last year. You know, we're like around 1.1 million right now, which would put us on track to do a little over 2 million for the year, which would be like a hundred thousand dollar increase compared to last year or $150,000. I don't think it's going to happen. I think that like, this is the slowest summer I've had in a long time. We had a big first couple months this year, like January, February, which is really uncommon. Usually those are slow months. Um, it was the same last year too. So I try not to compare my numbers yeah. 2022 to 2021 because 2021 was like an anomaly, you know? Yeah. Well, California has also had high humidity, like in the 70 percentile. So yeah. your shit's all fucking weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not Everything to say is that weird, <laughs> not to say that humidity has anything to do with fucking money's Sales. earned, <laughs> but um, no dude, it feels fucking weird. Like I've never in my life been so fucking busy. Like we're insanely busy. I barely get fucking days off. Yeah. But yet look and and comprehend that the future looks fucking grim as fuck. Right. Like when when do you ever like look at shit and be like, dude, we're so fucking busy and business is good, but then you just have the apocalypse right around the fucking corner, you right, know? Right, just waiting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's uh so 2008, let's see. 2006, 7 and 8 felt like that to me. Like this is it's too good to be true. You know, like how can there be this much business, this many people busy, this much cash? Like it didn't make sense, but also like wanting to be ignorant to any potential crash. It's like, yeah, it's going to fucking last forever. You know, like I'm going to be a billionaire one day. All I got to do is fucking answer the phone, you know? Um, and then it all came crashing down. And so the last couple of years have felt the same way to me. It's like same exact feeling as then. Like it's too good to be true. Like it's so easy to make money right now. We raise our prices. People still buy. Like there's no downsides, you know? Yeah. And for us, it hasn't been hard to hire people. So there's literally no downsides for us the last two and a half years. Um, this so last year was really weird because we we're really busy in the beginning of the year january february march which is totally uncommon like in 20 years or 19 years of tracking my numbers um I, we've never been busy that time of year you know yeah. relatively speaking we've always stayed busy but summer months are always slammed for us summer like basically tax time april 15th all the way through december 31st we're slammed every year during that period. But then January, February, March are our slow months. So 2021, we're busy that first quarter, which is uncommon. This year, we're busy that first quarter, which is uncommon. Um, and now things are odd. We're not slammed right now. We're busy, you know, but we're like three or four weeks out instead of like six or eight weeks out, you know. In terms of your scheduling? Year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this so time of I, year would usually be six to eight weeks out, like every summer. It's like a given. It's easy, easy work, easy money. We don't worry about summer at all. Um, and, year before last, yeah. I was, I stayed about a year out, and then last year 
we consistently stayed about four to six months. And then this year's been about, you know, the whole year we've been about, you know, staying about six months out the whole time. And right now, I'm just now getting to the stage to where I would say here in the last month, I've watched a huge decrease in phone calls. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, you know, fucking for the last two years, it's been, you know, I I just fucking keep headphones in my ears so I can keep working when I get phone calls. You know what I mean? And it's been like, uh, you know, I don't know. The phone calls, I'm sure for you are like, uh, crazy, but for me, like a good amount of phone calls is probably fucking, you know, so, uh, it, it's 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 hit and miss. It'll be like I'll get it's and it's weird how it happens. Like I'll get like fucking five five six phone calls a day for a couple days, and then they could slow down to, you know, maybe uh, a couple phone calls, two or three phone calls a week, to um, you know maybe some some weeks I might get a phone call or two a day. To right now, it's like, man, I might get a phone call a week or something. Yeah. Yeah. So um, one of my employees has been with me for a long time, like 12, 13 years. And he, there was only one year in that period where he didn't work for me. And he had gone to start his own company. You know, he got his contractor's license here in California. It's a C33 license. So he got his contractor's license and tried giving it a go. Um, didn't work out so well, you know, after a year he came back and he's been with me ever since. Um, but I pay him really well. I give him tons of flexibility. And and so the last year, um, he's been trying to get it up going again, you know, and he has one, one guy that used to work for me, um, who's really good, but, um, doesn't, hasn't worked for me for a while. They've kind of partnered up. And so the old employee of mine kind of runs things on the business, on the on-site side and then the guy that still works for me kind of runs estimates you know managing numbers shit like that they're only like a a three-man operation two people on site one that works for me full-time so he's pretty tied up um and so he's been checking in with me you know like how are your phone calls he's been more inquisitive about the business side yeah and so i'm you know i'm open with him i don't Probably because he's seeing, he's probably seeing a difference, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's seeing a difference on his side for sure. Like a hundred percent. And I think, you know, I had a conversation with him today. Um, You know, he's asking me about how phone calls are and stuff like that. And I'm really honest with him. You know, there's like some weeks where we're not having that many contracts getting signed this week. Lots of estimates, not that many contracts. Um, Or, you know, not that many estimates this week, not compared to normal. And so today we're talking about it and uh, he's having very few phone calls come in, very few new phone calls come in, you know, and I told him for me, like we've done so much fucking business in this area over the last 20 years, we just, we could do nothing and just fall ass backwards into phone calls, you know, like our, our name has been around enough. We've done enough. We have so much repeat and referral work that, we could do nothing. We could do terrible work for like the next five years and we're still going to get repeat phone calls. Like they'll go down, you know, the new people are not going to refer us, but all the old people until word gets around that we do shitty work, they're yeah. still going to be referring. You know what I mean? Like we have a runway of, you know, we could do terrible work for five years and, and still be getting phone calls. So we're lucky. We're in a, well, it's not luck. It took fucking 20 years to do it, yeah. but those repeat and referral uh, calls that is so much, so much business. It just takes a long time to build up, you know, to build it up uh, organically. So when you don't have that and you're just relying on the new phone calls to come in, if those phone calls slow down, now they're getting shared more across the board. You know, now, you know, let's say that the 10 people that would have called you this week, um, you know, three months ago, they're calling two other companies before they call you. Company one doesn't answer the phone. Company two doesn't answer the phone. You answer the phone, you know? So they went through three companies and they got you. Uh, When things start slowing down, company one and company two start answering their phone again. You know, those calls become so valuable to them 
Now they're answering them on first ring, you know, fucking dying for someone to make a phone call, dying for anybody to call them. Yeah. You know, they're answering it right away. So we've, we've, it's been important to me that we always answer the phone, no matter what, no matter how busy we are, no matter how slow we are, whatever, we just are, always are going to be available. Um, but a lot of the companies at lower levels, you know, like at, at one, two, three, four, five people companies, they get really busy and the schedule gets booked out. They stop answering the phone so much. They stop going on estimates so much, you know, they're like pre-qualifying people out of even, they don't even want to go do the bid. You know, it's like, I'm booked out for five months. I don't even want to come look at your house. Yeah. You know, I, I got name. my first bad review because of that situation, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, a lot of times people will call down the list until they get someone on the phone, you know? And so, when everyone's really busy, those guys who are, it's, it's, it's a bad business move to not answer your phone. You know, like no matter how you look at it, I, you know, I don't want to put anyone down, but it's a bad business move to not answer your business phone when you get a business phone call. Now I don't answer my phone after hours. Um, that's the choice that I make. A lot of, some people get answering services. Uh, for me, I'm just, it's not interesting to me. I'm sure it will be. So if I were pushing for maximum growth, I would for sure want my phone being answered after hours too, you know, cause I want every fucking lead that comes in. Um, I don't have a need to capture that. So it doesn't, it's not important to me, but during business hours, you should answer your phone how, however you can, or if you miss a call, return it. Hey, this is so-and-so from so-and-so painting. I just missed a call from you. Yeah. You know, that kind of shit. Um, so when everyone's really busy, they're just going down the list, you know, calling different painters, whatever, until someone answers. But when things slow down, the first person that's getting that's on the list is getting is answering the phone now. So now everyone else's calls start slowing down. So it just gets more competitive, you know, for phone calls. And if you're not paying for advertising or marketing, you're not paying to get your name out there in the number one position, then you're going to start feeling it. You know? So having said that, like, if the the way that I look at 2008 in this area, but like you talk about California, like, you know, you haven't had a hard time finding painters. I'm sure it's because you live in an area where there's millions of people. So statistically, yeah. there would just be more painters. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Here, um, you know, it's rural, lower population. Um, but the way that I look at 2008 is like, dude, the builders fucking died out you know um i you know there there's a lot of them that are back um and that's what they do but there was a period of time where they weren't building fucking anything yeah you know a long period of time so you know uh i've talked about it before but jumping into you know back into light commercial heavy commercial industrial maintenance and shit and then repaints to stay busy mm -hmm. throughout that probably six year period or so of the fucking sir obama but uh yeah um i'm curious how it's going to play out this time so the way that i look at it from you know my perspective here is you know 08 killed the construction industry here and then a lot of people had to get out of it painters builders yada yada but you know yep. specifically speaking on painting mm -hmm. you know a lot of people come through this trade it is not a permanent trade for for a lot of people you know yep. a lot of people don't like it a lot of people think that it's going to be easier than it is right oh painting i'll do that you know anybody mm -hmm. everybody's a painter and then realize oh fuck dude these guys are putting on you know hundreds of fucking gallons a day and and I have to actually work hard and shit. So, I mean, there's a huge, a high turnover rate anyway. But 08 to me seemed like it killed a lot of the actual tradesmen, a lot of the decent guys. And um, once the work started flowing again, uh, it pulled in a lot of inexperience because there was no, you know, there was no experience people there to fill that void. And you fast forward now and, you know, 10 years or so fucking later, you know, those inexperienced people that came in after 08 started training new inexperienced people. And in my opinion, the fucking, in my area anyway, the, the, the trade is a fucking nightmare mess, dude. Like yeah. 
you wouldn't believe the, you know, the phone calls I get to go fix other people's shit or people that didn't show up or, you know, painters that ran off with somebody's money or the fucking yeah. fact that the, uh, you know, the, the paint store has a new fucking, you know, three new paint cards in there like every yeah. other fucking week and shit. But so my question is, what, what do you, th- do you think this is going to be different? So like if you're stating that when things start to slow down, those fly by night kind of painters start picking up the phone more because they're starting to slow down. Um, you know, like the way things have been, in my opinion, for the last few years is even the shitty guys have been extremely busy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So when things start to slow down, what does that look like? Are these shitty guys because of, because this is a different situation. Like our economy is completely inflated. Our real estate market is inflated in 08. That shit had fallen out. So, I mean, we're kind of inside out compared to that economical situation. So, um, everyone died out during that. And it was like just a few fucking guys survived that shit. You know, um, this time I'm wondering if when the economy crashes, because everything's so inflated, is it going to be the shitty guys that stay busy because everyone's going to be looking for a cheaper price because everything's so expensive or, you know, do you think that they may die out first and then we'll kind of get the trade back and be able to kind of start rebuilding that perspective, that mind share that, you know, that uh, there are good guys out there. So what do you think it's going to do? Do you think the, the, you know, the, the experienced, more expensive guys are going to s- survive it out? Or do you think the flyby nights are going to be there and, and survive it out longer? Yeah, I think... Um... I think it is going to be a big shift over like these next two years. Um, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be the high quality companies like high quality painting companies that are going to take the lion's share. I think it's going to be the high quality marketing companies. You know, these painting companies that just do marketing, they do, they pay fucking $10,000 a month and Facebook ads and Google AdWords and flyers and all that. I think they're going to take the lion's share. Um, they're, they're putting their name out there constantly, you know, like compared to you with your company, you're building a, a strong name and a strong reputation, but it's for very few people, you know, like in one year, you're not serving 500 clients, you know, um, as your company grows, you'll start to serve more and more clients and you'll have a bigger backlog, you know, of people that you have served that would refer you, that would, uh, be repeat customers for you, whatever, right? Like that's constantly building in the background. Um, but the companies that are dumping money into marketing, they're touching, you know, whatever, 10 new people every day, you know, and they're doing jobs for maybe four new people or five or 10 people a week. So over, you know, they're serving 520 customers a year. As long as they're doing good work, you know, or having good customer service to make up for mediocre work, then those are 500 people that are going to refer them are going to be repeat customers the next year, another 500. Now they've got a thousand that are repeat and referrals. Um, And those numbers just keep turning over. So as long as they keep putting their name out there and they keep having good customer service, they're going to keep getting phone calls. If their name is out there as the number one, as like the top in any source in Yelp, in um, AdWords, in Facebook, um, any of these marketing sources that are pretty common for painters. When their calls start kind of going down, they're going to be answering the phone, like not letting any calls go by, right? Because those companies feel it, like my company. You know, if my calls slow down significantly, I feel it, you know, and I feel like the impending doom coming, right? Like if my calls slow down, because I watch these numbers, so... If I need, you know, 30 calls a week and of those 30 calls, I need 12 appointments a week. Um, And of those 12 appointments, I need six projects to sign. Um, Then I know like if, if this week and my estimator knows too, he'll, he'll call me. He's it's happened a handful of times this year already. Hey, I need more appointments on my schedule. Looks like a fucking ghost town. (laughs) You know and I'm like? Yeah check the numbers last year or 2019, see how those numbers look compared to this year, right? Because a lot of times it'll be, it's just 
you know, a random slow period and it's consistent year over year. Um, so it's nothing to worry about, but if it's a couple of weeks in a row, then it's like, all right, uh, what's, what's going to be our next move here? You know, like we've got 20 people to keep busy. We've got big bills to take care of every week. Um, you know, we have to start thinking about what does plan B look like? And now every phone call becomes really valuable. You know, like when, when you're busy and you're rolling and you're booked out, if you miss a phone call, it's not a big deal, you know, but if you're like, all right, I really have to hit those numbers. I really got to get to 20 calls this week. I'm answering every single one of them, you know, and I'm going to feel them out more to see if we can make some money on this deal or not. So, you know, here where I am, there's a lot of competition. So paint quality is pretty high. You know, you could call 10 companies and probably get a pretty high quality job out here. Um, because the people here will pay money for quality. You know, yeah. they, they they want high quality and the guys that are doing low quality are, are either, you know, they might get called out for an estimate, but if your estimate comes in at two grand and everyone else is at 10, you know, nine, 10, $11,000, that two grand guy is not even getting a second thought. You know, it's like, I don't know what the fuck they were going to do here, but I'm not taking a chance. You know? Yeah. So it's the opposite here. So like the, yeah. you know, the lower bidders are going to be looked at first and then, you know, you yeah. have to really have somebody that can think things through to consider, okay, well this guy, why is this guy so much higher? You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Um, and like, it seems like building a niche market here is in building it, and either people knowing the outcome of going with a cheaper price or um, you trying to figure out to get them to consider what could happen. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So ha how, how do you think guys like me, if shit really does start to fall apart, how do you think guys like me that are pretty much in a market that doesn't want to pay, you know, ritzy prices and shit and your competitors, if you call them that, are willing to work for fucking nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think you're right that it's a niche market, you know, but you know that there are people in your area that will pay good money for good work. You know, like there's nice houses out there. There are people with money out there for sure. It just becomes a matter of like, you know, I, I don't like all the generic salesy terms and everything, but finding your right client, you know, like client product, fit market product match to being able to figure out how to get your ideal client to buy from you or to get you in front of your ideal client. So that's where like the marketing dollars comes into play. Um, the flyers, the knocking on doors, the whatever it is, like being able to get your painting company in front of your ideal client is how you would build a niche market. You know, yeah. and, and it's tricky in your area. I don't even know where I'd begin exactly, but, you know, I'd be around the lake, you know, all the houses on the water. Yeah. You know what Dude, I mean? It, all the houses across the street from the houses on the water. Yeah. So the there's two towns, you know, like main towns where I live, Branson and then Hollister. And mm -hmm. uh, Branson is a tourist trap. Um, fucking billions of dollars went into building like fucking condos and golf courses and shit. And mm -hmm. that was kind of where I started was just turning out like commercial dude, you know, huge yeah. me megalithic projects. Now the way shit used to be with, in terms of repaints, in terms of maintaining those, um, bef before 2008 is those, those companies would, you know, hire painters to come in and do turnkey painting and repaint them and stuff like that. And then eventually it turned in-house to where they started just hiring maintenance staff and just yeah. your, you know, your typical blue jean painters or whatever that just worked there constantly repainting, you know, yeah. thousands and thousands of condo units and shit over and over again. Mm -hmm. Um, and where it stands now, I, I don't, I don't even fucking know, dude, like, I don't, I don't really do that stuff. Like if I ever go work a bid for stuff like that, I usually never get it, you know? Yeah. Or, you know, I, I kind of know, so I can't even really extract value from stuff like that. Um, yeah, there's definitely, of, definitely people who are not your ideal client. That's yeah. for sure. Like you can for sure have areas that you just wouldn't do well. In, well, not you know, with do, your type of business. I'm a, 
we're on a project right now that's like, dude, it's five or six stories off the ground. Yeah. Um, on the, the water. Yeah, the sides are... I'm going to have to get an 85-foot boom to get the sides and get it from the street. And then I'm I'm buying pump jacks or whatever um, for the back. Uh, it, really, you know, that, that shit wasn't budgeted into this job. But between, like, this job and the prior job and a couple jobs coming up, I'm just going to go ahead and get them. But mm-hmm. I'm going to have to spend, like, six grand on, on a set. And then I'll nice. have to spend a you know, probably three or four grand on a trailer and Mm -hmm. to haul them and shit. But, um, I'm in the way that I look at it too, is like, we've talked about this, like you, you know, you've talked about, you know, I, I probably have way more equipment than I should have for two guys. I could probably run a 15 man crew, whatever, whatever with the equipment that I have. But, um, I, the more that I look at it, like when I go to file taxes, like, why would I not keep buying tools because yeah. the government's just going to fucking take it from me? You know what yeah. I mean? 100%. So what I'm, I'm essentially what I'm saying is like, you know, I'm geared up to where dude, we can fucking do anything. Like I could put on at any given time, a few more guys and just be putting out. I could, I could buy another two thirty or year buy a 300 DI and literally be putting out a thousand gallons a day if I needed to. Right. Um, yep. But I don't, you know, I don't know. I, I want to prevent having to get into doing that shit again, you know, yeah. and just kind of fuck around with, with doing quality repaints, you know? Yeah. But so what, what would you recommend in terms of marketing? Like, um, I don't know fucking shit about marketing. I, I've been grinding on the video editing shit for probably three or four years now. And I, f- yeah. I'm starting to get to the stage to where I feel like it's, it's starting to look like professional, like a videographer did the shit. Yeah. Um, so how somebody like me that isn't really going to pump tens of thousands of dollars like you potentially would into marketing, what could I do if shit does fall out to just make sure that those phone calls keep coming? Yeah, The so you can do like targeted marketing for a few hundred dollars a month just not going to give you the results like $10,000 would, you know, or $5,000 would or 2000 even. Um, but it, it's different because in your area, like in mine, um, I could put $5,000 into marketing. I'd have places to spend it for one, you know, between like AdWords, Facebook ads, Yelp ads. Um, you know, I could spend five grand. It would be harder for you to spend five grand on marketing, you know, yeah. to be honest, because there aren't going to be that many places for you to put it. But you do things like mailers, you know, if you get on a mailing list, like for you, for any company, it's like A-B testing is the way to do it, right? A-B testing is just, you know, you, let's say you're going to do mailers. You're going to A-B test mailers. It's just. What, now, what is a mailer? Um, like a postcard, you know. You can you, can you do that? that? Like them? how much does that cost? Like. It depends on how many you do. So there are companies that will print them and mail them for you. You know, and that might be like 75 cents a piece or 90 cents a piece, something like that. Um, There are brochures that you could do, like a trifold brochure. I think we have some of those around here somewhere. Um, But so we've done a few different ways. But the A-B testing is, you know, like option A and option B, which one performs better, you know. And that's like, the number one thing for figuring out which marketing works the best is to compare them against each other. So for flyers, you might do one that's very simple, just, you know, you'd show me your business card recently. Um, So one could be very simple, just your logo on the front, the way that it is on the card, you know, where it's almost just like an image. And then the backside, some clever call to action, you know, 10% off for the month of November, you know, just that use this code or whatever coupon code blah 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 um so something basic like that versus you know your image on the front and then a full list on the back of things that you do and blah 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 a bunch of information and see which one performs better you know for one month you run uh, option a for one month run option b all to the same area and then see which one performs better so 
same with paid marketing. You know, if you do Google AdWords, that becomes trickier. And I think you either need to know what you're doing or you need to hire somebody that knows what they're doing because they're going to A-B test. They're going to test keywords and they're going to say, okay, with a picture in the ad, it performs this well. With no picture in the ad, it performs like this. And then figure out which one performs best, what time a, a day people are searching. Like you get into all the nitty gritty details. If I were in your area at your stage, um, I would probably have some kind of a trifold pamphlet, you know, almost like think about what your video does uh, to a, to a sell your company and put that in a pamphlet, you know? Yeah. And then I would like either be doing door to door shit myself or paying some kid to do door to door shit and, or, or get a mailing list for all the homes around the lake and like blast them on a regular basis. Just to reiterate, this is like, you know, we've kind of transitioned into, uh, you know, fucking, you know, being slow, but we, you know, I am not slow right now by any yeah. means. I'm, I'm just, I can see it fucking coming. Like, right. you know, I am insanely fucking busy. Um, but I do not want to deal with, uh, I, I actually went into business for myself after 2008, I think it was around 2010 and I stayed independent for a couple years or so. Um, Maybe it was later than 2010. It might have been like thir- 2013 or something. I, I don't I don't fucking remember. But uh, I I stayed fairly busy, and it was nerve wracking. And you know, like the you know my my ex or whatever, I she didn't work, so I was like the only you know source of income. So I couldn't take risks and shit. I had yeah. two kids that I had to you know, feed and house and all that shit. And, and it was always safer to just work for somebody else. Yeah. So, you know, I did that for, for two years and then shit slowed for me. Um, and I just didn't see like any, uh, any, the potential to be out of it. Now I could have, I could have jumped the gun too early. Um, because I eventually, when I went to work for this other company, I fucking changed my phone number. So I don't know if the shit would have, if it was yeah. just like, Hey, this is a two week period where you didn't get any phone calls or something. Right. I don't know if that would have panned out honestly, but I got nervous, went to work for another company. And then, you know, like I said, that was the last fucking dude that I worked for before I went into business for myself. But yeah. I did the whole thing where I spent, four fucking years just running fucking hard restructuring his company and i don't want to fucking do that shit anymore dude Did i don't want to a- i don't want to slow to the point to where i have to go restart fucking prove myself yeah. push push the right guys out to fucking yeah. be the main guy so i can just get more money and fucking play that whole game dude i don't mm-hmm. want to fucking do it anymore Did you have a google my business page last time you went on your own no, dude. I, I, okay. I walked around, handed out flyers and, and fucking yeah. just shit like that. So like if I were you and things were getting slow and I was getting a little worried, you know, we don't have that much work on the schedule. Maybe we're only a month out and normally we're six. Yeah. Um, is I would probably do a flyer, have a little QR code that linked to one of your videos or two of your videos or all of your videos or whatever, you know, just, just, to get me out there, you know, yeah. like that would be a separator from every other flyer they get from every other painting company. Um, but having like Google my business around and having lots of good reviews, you're like pretty much permanently online, yeah. you know, like people are going to find you even if it's by accident, you know, and the longer you're a part of this online um, space, with good reviews, with updated information. You know, if you're posting once a week or once a month, you're constantly putting a little bit of new information in there. Dude, um, can you, can I, calls. I cannot figure out how to put video links like on Google. It's like the most basic mm-hmm. bullshit that doesn't really let you do anything. And I notice just, just knowing Google, just like they canceled the fucking Google play music and mm-hmm. fucking robbed me of all the fucking music that I bought. Mm-hmm. Like, Google yeah. will come out with some bullshit, then they'll fucking cancel it because they've got God money. 
But I just noticed when I, you know how you have the app to where you manage your business page. I I went to click on it one day and it was like, this is no longer available. You have to go to your business through Google maps. And it's like, what the fuck, dude? I got to go through Google maps now to. That's really clunky. I don't know why they did that. Dude, it's stupid. Yeah. I, I, and Google's the only thing that I'm on in terms of like a what like an online phone book i guess yeah i should probably get on other other deals do you think so look like yeah i mean you could do different listings you can go on pinterest to make a page you can go on like there's tons of places where you can put a free page on i i Um, I have a linkedin but i despise it because all it is is it seems like it's just marketing scams that fucking send you messages and i fucking hate linkedin yeah and i don't we're listed on all that stuff but i don't i'm not like um i don't ever go on linkedin you know but i have a listing there with some content yeah um if i really wanted to maximize the leverage that i have i would be posting new up new content all the time on all of these listings you know there's like a million free listings that you can have so you know if we do a search of my company online you would see me under like 25 30 different like random um uh listings you know like under a zoom listing and a builder listing and a you know yp.com listing and just we're on so many things you know but they all give backlinks to your website so you know you click on uh, yp.com which is the yellowpages.com i have a free listing there you click on my name. It has some information about my company, a click to view website button, you know, and that's on 26, 30 different uh, listings and they're all free and I don't do anything to maintain them, but they're all there because it benefits them to have more companies on their, on their page, you know? Um, so there are companies you can pay to like get you on all these different random fucking one-off, you know, website listings um, or you could do it yourself. You know, if we search like services in my area or painting companies in my area, um, home services in my area, and just search and see what all the free listings you can get are, you can do that. And you just like, that's helping with SEO on your website. Um, Even doing a blog, a blog is super beneficial to online marketing. If you, if you do that on your website, do a blog and just post like, um, even for this, you know, doing this podcast there's a way for us to convert everything we're saying into text, you know? And at some point um, when we develop a paint snippers website, um, we're going to convert these into text and make it be a blog, you know? And so there's going to be however many words we speak in an hour or two hours, you know, there's going to be 10,000 word blog posted every week. That is um, it's just searchable for Google. You know, they're going to see paint, uh, come up 30 times. They're going to see Sherman Williams come up 30 times and whatever the fuck else we talk about, right? It's just going to come up in blog form. It's going to be text content. So when Google's crawlers are going out looking for irrelevant information and whatever someone's searching, they're going to find that blog and they're going to yeah. read it and be like, what the fuck is this? These guys are crazy, right? Like some homeowner looking for a painting company. I tried um, to coin the term potato painter on, <laughs> on fucking, what is the, what is the, uh, that what, like the urban dictionary? Yeah. <laughs> I, I did that. Like I came up with that like years ago and then uh, I tried to try to put it in the urban dictionary and they declined <laughs> it. So nice. But yeah, but so like, um, some companies, higher tech companies will do a video. Um, so it might be like, uh, you know, like you produce videos, but there's no talking in them. Right. Yeah. But if you produced a video where you talk, you spoke, put that on your website converted the talk to text and then made that a blog um you would be more searchable you know like you i have that uh, more more searching done i have that uh commercial that graco flew out and filmed yeah um i don't do i'm not down dude that was so fucking awkward by the way uh <laughs> yeah. but uh yeah like yeah we'll have to sit down and i'm gonna ha- i yeah. want to be proactive with this shit yeah. And uh I don't know, maybe we'll trade. Maybe I'll I'll do a video for you and you yeah. can fucking help me with some marketing and shit. Definitely. Like, yeah, like we could put together a list of like what would be the easiest things to knock off the list that are just constantly doing a little bit of marketing. 
you know, and really like a five minute fucking hop in front of a camera or even on a camera, just on a microphone, a five minute explanation of what you do on an exterior or a 10 minute explanation, whatever, yeah. like what your steps are. And then convert that video into text, which is super. There's a lot of um, apps that'll do that now. Dude, convert I've spent it to text. They make that be your your weekly blog, or your monthly blog. Yeah. And with that blog, you're you're posting new text every month that is like very specifically related to painting in your area. You know, you say the word Branson fucking thirty times a month in it, and painting together. And you're going to start coming up more often, you know, just, it's just natural. It's organic. You're not paying anything to do this. Like these are things, but it takes time. You know, you I've probably spent up. like six or $7,000 just in, um, fucking video, like, vid like editing software and fucking plugins and cameras and fucking drones and all this shit. And, uh, I, have spent like, you know, three years like obsessing over and just trying to study film, you know? Yeah, yeah. And like, how do you keep someone's attention span there? And like, yeah. and just taking, and what I know, you know how like you can look at a painter and tell just by the way he pulls a trigger or moves his arm or something to make a pass where you can kind of see his, his yeah. holes and see their inexperience and stuff versus yeah. somebody you know, where you can see their experience. Like even yeah. I'm applying things like that to videos and like cutting scenes at the perfect time and just movement. And, yeah. and like, the, like if you speed up my videos, dude, and you study the movement, like you can see that it's robotic and stuff, but yeah. um, I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, uh, I had, I had, money. yeah, dude, it, like TikTok, uh, I fucking, um, I noticed on TikTok, like they keep taking the sound off of my videos due to copyright shit. So I spent like 150 fucking dollars just to be able to do this last video that I did. So I could use, uh, I, I downloaded this, what was supposed to be copyright free music and it yeah. had different files so I could match the music up exactly where I wanted it. So it would hit at certain spots yeah. and just kind of make, make it an overall, fucking experience and then i put it on tiktok and they fucking took it down so even the fucking the royalty free music that i fucking purchased got taken down and shit but um i need to yeah i just want to i want to be fucking proactive dude because things uh feel like they're gonna get bad now i either yeah. want to figure it out or i want it to get so bad that i'm just like fucking killing squirrels and like spying on my neighbors <laughs> and shit to steal their stuff. But yeah, <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, um, yeah. I imagine we can do an episode on that where maybe we go through like top 10 or top five things that we can do now that cost no money, just time, you know, yeah. the time investment. Um, but the blog, like if you talk to any SEO companies, any uh, website building companies who are trying to market you, besides like keywords, hidden keywords, um, the blog is like the most important thing because it's just maybe, so much content, so much new content. Maybe that's what we, sh we should do on next episode so we're not fucking wasting time fucking, yeah. you know, it would just do it fucking live and talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll make some notes. Yeah, but that's, uh, yeah, and probably really um, good timing right now. I think a lot of companies are going to start. It's interesting to me. What I don't know, what I'm curious to see what happens is with the companies that just opened in the last year or two that are brand new to painting, but opened up, they know how to do marketing. Like there's a couple companies that I keep an eye on that the business owner doesn't even do painting themselves. Yeah. You know, they just are good at marketing, they're good at sales. And so they're able to do half a million dollars in the first year, you know, a million dollars in the second year. Um, these kind of crazy numbers. Um, well, just to, to see what happens to them. Yeah. Well, to re rebuttal that, I, I want you to keep going on what you were yeah. going to say, but there's a painter in this town uh, that he has had a painting company for fucking 40 plus years, you know? And he's stayed busy and blah, blah, blah. Um, 
and while we were doing, you know, while I worked for all like the heavy hitters doing new construction and shit, this dude Mm -hmm. pretty much handled all the repaints in town. So, you know, as he's gotten older, I've watched him fucking slowly decline. But this last couple years for him during all this crazy busy shit, dude, I've watched him completely fall apart, dude. Mm -hmm. And it's because he couldn't, the dude himself was a, he owned a painting business for fucking 40 plus years, but he couldn't go in the field and do that shit himself. Right. Yeah. So the way that the, the market is right now, and this is like kind of validates, you know, how I believe my area is completely inexperienced. This dude could not get a fucking painter to save his life, dude. Um, yeah. In terms of somebody that he could trust to be in the fucking field and and actually turn over a decent product like um yeah he's he's pretty much i think he fucking retired or something is what they keep saying at the paint store but yeah Yeah. dude i watched him decline to you know i started getting phone calls of customers um you know hey this dude so-and-so screwed up our house and fucking we had to fire him can you come give us an estimate blah 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 kind of shit so um yeah dude i've watched him decline to where yeah he's pretty much done but um, it's easy to go that route. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm curious to see with these companies where they yeah, started during the pandemic and then blew up. It's scary to think about those guys having all the work, right? Just because yeah. they're cheaper and they have money dumped into fucking marketing and their business types yeah. and they're just throwing fucking pretty much piles of dog shit at the wall. But yeah. when does that start to bite them in the ass even in a devalued market like mine to where people are going to be like you know let's let's get more bids or let's you know let's see if there's somebody that you know that might have more experience or you know what i mean like why are they sending us five guys you know in blue jeans and they're fucking that's only that only goes away when the reputation goes away yeah that's because they're they're in front of more people than you are you know, they're in front of more faces than you are. But so that's they're, they're like a brand new company to anybody else, except they have, you know, a history of, you know, 131 uh, five star Google reviews. Right. That, I guess that's the same kind of aspect if if Walmart does do the the fucking painting services yeah. thing like yeah. that. People may do that. But then yeah. eventually the word will get around. Right. Like, dude, yes. don't hire those fucking Walmart painters. Right. right. <laughs> and that's the thing that that is the word for like Home Depot, you know, like Home yeah. Depot does not have a great reputation for home services. So Home Depot would be like the the cheap way of going about getting work done in your house. You yeah. know, it's like, uh, I don't really want to go through Home Depot. Right. Um, and that's why they're not blown up is because everybody knows you go through Home Depot, you're going to have some problems. Maybe, you, you know, you're going to get a subcontractor crew out. Um, my only thought on hiring Home Depot is they probably have a good guarantee. You know, they probably have a good backing. Um, but it's not going to be custom. It's not going to be one off. It's not going to be special. You know, you're just hoping they don't fuck it up too bad. Um, (laughs) but so like a big company, they're going to get more calls than you or not a big company, but a company that is marketing and business, you know, before it is quality, they're going to keep getting those calls first, as long as they're paying for them, you know? Yeah. Uh, because they're they're unless they have a bad re- unless they earn a bad reputation, they're going to keep getting those calls first. They're going to keep getting all the business um, until they build a bad reputation. I when when we were at our largest, um, I had like thirty five to forty guys, and I had one subcontractor. I had a few subcontractors, but one specifically um, was like a smooth talker. Yes, no problem. I'll get it done for you. Oh, you have three projects next week. Yeah, no problem. Let me figure it out this weekend. I'll get it done for you. You know, like fucking smooth talker, shysty kind of person. And they would get people on the job site. But that was the first time where it was like, fuck, I look really, my company looks really bad. You know, (laughs) like, you know what I mean? Like fucking totally cutting corners, saying the job's done when it's like, it's obviously only one coat, you know, like the fucking place looks like shit. That was the first time where I had that experience where it's like, oh shit, like this could go south real fast. Yeah. But, but if I had kept those guys on, you know, and kept doing projects with them, 
you know, three a week, two or three a week for a year. If it's just like, I just tried to make it work and I didn't care that much about quality and I just want to get a paycheck. They would, they could do a lot of jobs, but every other one was like dog shit, you know, yeah. I'd have to have my guys go and fix it. Um, but if I'd done that for a year and just have my guys fix it and just like get by, um, I would start hurting my reputation, you know, yeah. and then eventually I would, my name wouldn't mean very much. And even though I'm getting in front of people's faces with my marketing dollars, they look at my online, um, uh, I can't think of the word, uh, my online reputation and it looks bad. You know, it's like in the last year I've had 12 bad reviews about quality, you know, like you, you that shit could go downhill real fast. Yeah. So it's, um, but like I said, I'm curious to see what those companies do. The one that are like non painter business owners who are good at marketing and sales, because it's easy for anybody to blow up right now who wants to push sales. Um, if they're spending thousands of dollars on marketing, they're doing good sales process, good follow-up process. It's easy for them to grow big quickly. I just wonder what it's going to be like when things slow down, you know, are they still going to have a fine time? Cause even now people are talking about marketing spending, not doing what it used to do. You know, like leads are being cut in half. You're, you're spending twice as much now for half as many leads because um, Apple changed their privacy features. Now Facebook marketing doesn't work as well. Um, Google AdWords are getting uh, priced up because people are spending more money for the terms like, paint my house, you know, interior painting, exterior painting. So yeah. now those leads are becoming more expensive because everyone's trying to buy leads. So I'm just curious to see what happens to them, you know, over the next year or two. Yeah, I do. I think some of those lead generating services uh, call me and ask certain questions like, yeah, we were wondering if, you know, how far out you guys are booked. Yeah. I think they're trying to to predict a decline you know what i mean yeah and uh they're they i think they call me tr pretending to be a homeowner <laughs> yeah yeah i've got i think i you know i try to like sort it out and shit but you know i primarily just uh you know and especially the ones where people are asking um prices i try and say we don't quote prices over the phone or yeah, whatever. But the the painting industry is so far behind right now on technology um, and even like on business practices. So far behind, and this is true for a lot of construction trades. Um, but we're so far behind on like marketing processes, on sales processes, um, on managing your numbers, tracking all your numbers, like being a real legitimate professional business we're so far behind on it that yeah. a couple of these larger companies can come in um you know fucking talk 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 their way into business and hire people that can do average work as long as they're not making people mad they're going to build their business just because yeah. all the high quality painters are not proficient in business. They're not managing numbers. They're not, you know what I mean? They're not paying yeah. five grand a month in marketing to get in front of people. It's like you're not doing any of that. It's like, I, I was watching, uh, and I'm not, I do, I, you know, I try, I don't go around talking about myself much or whatever, you know, I'm this, I'm that blah, blah, blah. But mm -hmm. fucking, I was, uh, I seen on, I looked at, uh, since Raymond's been gone, I looked to see what he was doing like on Facebook, mm -hmm. like once, yeah. I think he blocked me on Instagram um, because I had commented, commented on a fucking sticker he had on a hard hat, which I disagreed with. And uh, then like several months later, this is like probably a couple months ago, I looked at, uh, or a month ago, I looked at the company that he's working for um, on Facebook and I seen that they had joined the union and blah, blah, blah. And then the dude had a post of Raymond on there. Um, it, and it said something like, uh, we're so incredibly lucky to have found the employees that we had. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not going to talk shit about Raymond, but like, 
you know, we have a storied history. We were kids when we started painting together and stuff. And, yeah. you know, he, you know, we worked for the same company. Like I went to work for his fucking ex brother in law. And like, we fucking cracked knuckles together and shit dude for a long time. And then he came to work for me when I was running logistics for another company and I put him through fucking hell. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And then he came to work for me, you know, years, you know, a couple years later, and I tried my best to treat him good. You know what I mean? Like yeah. pay him more than he'd ever made before and fucking blah, blah, blah. Um, and, you know, I gave him money to fucking move. I gave him moving expenses and he didn't fucking move. He just stayed there. So like he slowly Smart. after fucking months of just making this hour and a half or he was probably driving two and a half to three hours a day, dude. He just started yeah. falling apart, dude, you know, like, and it was starting to get to the point to where I was biting my tongue and I couldn't fucking take it. I was going to fucking explode. But anyway, I seen, I seen that, uh, seen that Facebook post, but the first thing that popped into my head was, you know, one team's fucking kicker can be another team's quarterback, you know? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's, uh, I mean, man. I think like if uh, I could do an experiment and just with someone else's money, you know, if I could take, I don't know, maybe like a quarter million dollars, maybe a half a million and just try to build a painting company with um, like not being tied into it at all, just build it from scratch, but have it be like a fully autonomous company where I'm not involved in it all in the day to day at all. Like I don't answer phone calls. I don't talk to employees. I don't do anything. Um, I think it'd be totally doable just with marketing money. Like just, you wouldn't even have to be like a CEO or president or anything. You just have a manager that deals with that, a general manager. Um, I think it would be pretty easy to come in and do that as long as you had the money to back it. Cause you need a lot of marketing money, you know, but you could come into a market like if I went into your market, even if I went into my market, but if I went into your market with a lot of money spent on advertising every single month, month in, month out, you're seeing the same ads. Why the fuck is this stupid company showing up everywhere? <laughs> I'm right? going to slash his tires. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, have a corny fucking Facebook commercial. I'll slash those prices, right? Yeah. Um, uh, but if you're just constantly seeing that company day in day out because they're spending 10 grand a month on marketing and any channel that they can and flyers and fucking billboards and whatever um you're gonna generate business you know you just, as far as figuring out where the profitable point is how much can you charge how much can't you charge you know and being able to get away with that um have, have, you, have you ever heard market. of anybody like just going and painting somebody's house like outside and then being like, hey, we painted your house. <laughs> you, <laughs> Just do it without wanna, him asking. Yeah. You want to pay us for it? <laughs> <laughs> We've I've done projects at a big discount to get into a neighborhood. Just yeah. so I can market the neighborhood. You know, I've done shit like that. Um, but no. <laughs> <Not>. <laughs> just the homeowner uh, show up one day and their sued. house is painted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good. All right. Um, yeah, I gotta wrap up. All right. Um okay, so is this is episode 19. It is, uh, huh? I think so. Episode 20 next time. All right. Um, yeah, so I think next week we'll have to do a little bit of homework on this to prepare a little. So we'll see what we yeah. get to. It's turning out for the for the listeners, it's turning out that summer times are a little more difficult to fucking <laughs> to get this shit done like over the weekend. Yeah. Um, so we've been doing Mondays as a last minute thing, but um yeah, we might have to change it to like Monday, Tuesday during the summer. We're going to have summer hours. Yeah, dude. Um, but like I was in Big Bear over the weekend and we, you know, took the boat out Saturday. Um, I think you guys were out this weekend. You broke your uh, your uh, strap. Yeah, the winch what strap What did you end up broke. doing? Did you have to get a new, like wind a new one on there? I, I put my clothes into a dry bag and I, I dove in the water and I swam to shore and I fucking put my clothes back on. And I walked to the truck and then I drove the fucking truck to a fucking 
boat uh, supply place, which, you know, luckily when they opened, they had a two inch strap and then I yeah. installed it and then went back and fucking parked the, the truck by, by the launch ramp because I had had my truck at a campground mm-hmm. and fucking, you know, I, I probably could have fucking gotten the boat out of the water and just used a safety chain, but that yeah. would have been, that would have been fucking kind of ballsy you know yeah 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 it's not really a good place to take too much risk. yeah but dude it's such a stressful fucking weekend like there's always something going wrong we illegally camped on an island on the lake and so i was nervous about fucking you know the cops coming and shit and then uh the water cops i don't know what you call them aqua (laughs) cops but fucking (laughs) (laughs) Uh, dude, it was so hot. I ended up sleeping in the boat because it was like a fucking sauna in the tent. Oh yeah, yeah, it was hot here this weekend. All right, I gotta wrap it up. Um, okay, so we'll do. Well, we'll get this one posted up pretty quickly, but then I think as long as we can get some homework done, then we'll figure out this next steps marketing for the next episode. Yeah, let we we'll, within a couple. Yeah, of next episode will be like the uh, zombie survival's guide or something. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yep. Learn how to where to buy guns, how to get registered for a gun, and how to do marketing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. I'm out of here. I'll see you later. Later. As always, please like our YouTube page. Give us five star only reviews on all podcast platforms. If you have questions or comments, send them over to hello at paintsniffers.com or on Instagram at paint underscore sniffers. You can also watch the video version of the podcast on the Alpha Painting YouTube page. Go to playlists and it will be filed under Paint Sniffer Podcast. Via YouTube, you can write into QA at paintsniffer.com. Thank you for listening to Paint Sniffer Podcast.